What? The National Guard will be deployed for total solar eclipse on April 8th. Another cuckoo yep yep. Uh, oh, here's one. One of the stories uh, when we began to discover what I call the Grand Deception uh, was in 1979, and apparently there was some kind of clash. Uh, 1983 is the date that I call that we finally recognized that we had made a disastrous mistake. And uh, that's when MJ-12 realized that they were in deep, deep trouble. They had made uh, a deal with these people, and it had not uh, worked out, and now the question was what to do. There's really no way to get ready for it. The reason I think it's coming is because I have contacts within the government that uh, tell me that they're bracing themselves for something, but they're not going to tell us about it. We are going to kill your science. We will do it with our snowballs. They entered your solar system months ago. We sent them to your planet, to the places where your best minds explore reality at its most fundamental level. Everything they see in here, we see in here at the same time. And we will destroy the science that could defeat us. Welcome back to the coolest channel on YouTube. Look, just do me one favor, smash that like button. Let's get this video to like 20,000 likes. I know we can do it, but look, I know, look, a lot of people told me my last video about the relationships was one of my best videos, but I personally think this one right here is one of my best videos. I'm just sitting here putting this thing together and I'm just like, wow. Because look, y'all gonna see, man, the math is math. And don't skip a thing, man, or you'll be lost in the sauce. Make sure you're going out here to do your own research. Never believe anything you see on these videos before you go out here and do your own research, man. But look, let me know how y'all feel about this video in the comments down below, man. Just know if you're going through a tough time in life, just know you never end it by yourself. We're going through this thing called life together. Tribe up, subscribe to my channel, share these videos with your friends and families. And look, let's get into this video. I love you guys. Let's get it. <laughs> zombies though Now, but the amazing thing is people don't know, the solar eclipse is happening on the very same day as the original plagues of the three days of darkness began. No! Yes, yes. Okay, it's on okay, the okay. very same day. This one? This, this, this one we're this going to April, have? April, April 8th. 8th is the very day of the three days of darkness plagues began in the 
in original the land of Egypt. Exodus. Yes. Unbelievable. Is this a warning then? Is God? It's going. <laughs> we got the Nineveh and the Jonah towns going through, but I mean, is it, what kind of warning is this? Great question. Here's the thing. In Genesis 1:14, God declared yep. the sun and the moon were for signs. Right. The only signs they can give is eclipses. All right. And the nice thing about eclipses, no false prophet can manipulate it. No. Okay. And they speak to every language, tribe, nation, and tongue. Yep. They don't need to be translated. Nope. Solar eclipse means judgment is coming upon a nation. Lunar eclipse refers to judgment coming upon Israel. Okay. Now, get a load of this. There has only been, since we become a nation in 1776, there has only been eight total solar eclipses that have completely crossed the United States. I'm not talking about one that just clips California or Florida. I'm talking that traverses the whole United States horizontally or vertically. There's only been eight since we became a nation. Wow. And guess when they occur? Two of them occurred during the Revolutionary War. Three of them occurred during the Civil War. Two of them occurred during the Vietnam War. Are we getting a hint of what this oh, means? Oh, no. And so now in the 2000s, there was 2017, and now this one in 2024, and it's like a bullseye forms an X right over the United States. Now, here's what's amazing. Of those eight, only one, which was the one seven years ago, it only crossed the United States and no other country. The other ones crossed Mexico and Canada and U.S. or something right. like that. But the United States was singled out with Just the one, one seven years ago. Yes. Once. Wow. And now we have April 8th on Nissan 1. That Nissan 1 is the same day the glory of God fell. It's the same day at the inauguration ceremony of Moses' tabernacle. Okay? This is when this eclipse crosses these two places in the United States. And it's definitely... God wants to communicate with us. People have to understand, God wants to communicate. These eclipses are communications directly from God warning us of what's coming. I mean, this is, without a question, a biblical sign. I was telling people yeah. uh, earlier that, you know, you got the solar eclipses. That's God made. You, when you have a moon, a lunar eclipse or a blood moon that you were yeah. so famous in bringing forward, that's a God sign. The... There's two different types of locusts coming, you know, we know that. Yeah. You know, there's all all of these signs that are coming right now are all God signs. They're not man-made, not no. man-manipulated. It right. isn't Y2K. Right. Okay, it's not the mind calendar. Right. It's not Harold <laughs> Camping <laughs> predicting the rapture, right. all of which exactly. man-made and failed. These yes. are God signs. You can't run from these. These are biblical, right? Ex that's the whole point. See, the problem is the church is on the wrong calendar. Because our regular calendar is based only on the sun. That's the, wrong. And, That's wrong. And I, Iran uses the same calendar we do. Okay. Then you have the Muslim calendar, which is only based on the moon. Now they're both scientifically accurate, but they're not the one God uses. Like if I'm meeting with you, we have a two or three hour time difference. Right. If we're going to meet, we got to agree on what time. Right. God is the master of time. And if you're a slave, who controls your time? The master. The master he tells you when to go to bed, when to get up, when to do this. God, the first commandment. Most people don't realize, you know, the very first commandment wasn't given on Mount Sinai. The very first commandment was given in Egypt, and it was get on my calendar. Nisan wow. 1 is the first day. He wants his people on his calendar. Well, in Genesis 1.14, it says, let them determine the times. Not let the sun, not let the moon, but the reason why, you can only have a solar eclipse on a new moon. You can only have a lunar eclipse that's on true. a full moon. That's so true. So that's why he says, okay, your months are based on the new moon. This is where I can communicate with you. Yep. Okay? Passover and Sukkot are on a full moon, so I can yep. communicate with you. Because it's the appointed times. Appointed it, times. Exactly. It, it's... The other cuckoo yep yep. Uh, oh, here's one. 
great plan. Texas Red Angus, flying them 7,000 miles to Israel. Many evangelicals believe these red heifers will usher Christ's second coming. The ceremony could take place any day. Rapture isn't coming. There haven't been any ominous signs. building y'all pay attention pay attention about these heifers you feel me like well not the heifers y'all thinking but you know some heifers out here that we got to talk about we about to talk about the heifers right now okay all right Elia, you here at the Green Airport. what in the world is going on here what in the world is an interesting expression the world has just changed in ways that people are only now beginning to feel uh the red heifers have just arrived in israel they're still less than a year old they have to be two years old in one day but when they are two years old in one day, we can perform the red heifer uh, ceremony, and that will allow us to begin the temple service in completeness. We don't need the temple to do that. Um, we just need a small altar in the proper space on the temple mount. And when we begin the temple service, then it can become the house of prayer for all nations. And that's what we're all waiting for. I want to, I want to take your sacrifice up, dude. I want to, you come to me. I want to be the one to take yours. I'm looking forward to that day. Keep watching. Here are more pictures of the arrival of the red heifers that was in Israel. You can pause and read this caption. Of course, as you can see right there, they're talking about it. But there they are right there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Because the red heifer is in link with the temple sacrifices. And they are preparing for the third temple. Why is this prophetic? Because there is a temple here during the tribulation. That's the third temple. And some may say that's the human body. No, it isn't. Because the outer court is literally trampled by the Gentiles. We see this temple again mentioned in Daniel 9, 27 with the sacrifices that's in link to the Antichrist and the treaty he gets. We're at the time of the end, my friends. If you don't know Jesus, get to know him. Check the pin video on my page to get saved and follow for more content like this. Also, if end time prophecy interests you, at the end of the month, I'm doing a three-day detailed analysis on the book of Revelation. If you like my teaching style, you'll benefit from it. I'm going to be talking about the different schools of thought, the Antichrist, the false prophet, and more. If you want to be a part of it, go to my profile and click the Eventbrite link in my bio. See you there. I'm not sure why they're trying to speed up the end times, but the sacrifice they're about to do is very cult-like behavior. This is picking up a lot of speed very quickly in these evangelical Christian groups right now. These are all new videos on the Red Heifer prophecy that were posted within the past few days. South Park actually made an episode related to this, and you can find a clip of it on TikTok. The reason this matters for everybody else, because if these religious fanatics do this, they may very likely toss us into World War III. Hey, we building, y'all. We building. Pay attention. This shit get crazy. Look at it, guys. Another angle. That's the doomsday clock. New York City. Union Square. Act in time, they're telling you. Look at this. Five years. Now, pay attention to these numbers and stuff. Like, the whole the whole sentiment of this. Pay attention. This is going to build up, and it's going to show you a bigger picture. It's crazy. You got five years. And they already built that new third temple. In Israel, by the way, in Jerusalem, it's already built. You see that climate clock? That temple's already built, by the way. They got a thing called the Red Heifer. Go and look it up. I study it. Pure Red Heifers. And when they slaughter them, that's when it's all going to begin. Climate clock. Five right years. there. Five years. The climate clock. It's not a climate clock, guys. They know what the Bible's doing. And everything that's going on in this world is going according to things that they took out of the Bible. You see, look, climate clock. World climate clock. Unbelievable. Look at this. Union Square Park. See this? There. Look at that. Act in time. What do y'all think is going to happen when that 
clock goes to zero. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Look, you see that? Act in time. They're trying to give you a warning right there. That's your warning. One of the main reasons Atlantis had to go down was because they were going against the laws of nature. They were experimenting by combining animals and human. Now, when y'all watching this, what are we doing? Are we creating things? Are we tinkering with genetics and, you know, doing weird shit, trying to get out of the fucking goddamn planet? Like, I just seen a rocket, you know, from the SpaceX. They didn't even announce it, and it came through here and spooked everybody. But, you know, they trying to get out this motherfucker. But we about to find out why, y'all. Some of us already know, right? Let me know in the comments down below if you know what I'm talking about. Your legends of the half man, half animals, they don't come from Greece. They came from Atlantis. They were handed down into the Greek legends, but they started with Atlantis. The, you know, the centaurs, the half man, half horse, the half man, half uh, bull, all of these were experiments that the Atlanteans were doing. And a lot of it was done, they made servants out of them, slaves, and used them in different things like that. But they said they were disobeying the laws of nature. You're not supposed to fool around with things like that. It was one of the main reasons that Atlantis had to go down. They said, the one reason you have to know this is because your own civilization is doing the same thing. We're fast approaching that point where this cannot be allowed, the line has to be drawn. Some of you probably know about where they're introducing the human cells into the pigs so they can use the pig organs to transplant into the human body. Because the human body will reject something that is foreign, but it won't reject it if it has human uh, cells. And that was the logic behind the whole thing. But uh, there was one scientist who said, I don't think this is safe because, sure, you can eat pork, you can handle pigs, but what would happen if you put the organ in the human body and the blood was flowing through that constantly? He said, we could create a disease that there would be no cure for. And he said, you better take it slow here and really look at this. So they stopped the experimentation for a little while. But then they said, oh, I don't think it'll happen, so now they're doing it again. And they told me, you're going down the wrong way. You're headed down the same road of destruction that all the other ones have gone down. But in the case of Atlantis, a lot of it had to do with the crystals, too. They were using too much crystal power. They ended up making holes in the ozone layer that let the sun come through and was burning part. This is how some of the deserts were formed in the world. They were also uh, creating too much power that the, world, the Earth couldn't handle it. So they said, this had to be stopped. We've gone too far. Oh, this is, this is the explanation for the Bermuda Triangle. That was part of the original Atlantis. And if you can picture this, on that point, there was a temple. And they did time travel and time experimentation, going back and forth. And there was a temple that used crystals that they could open and close portals so they could travel through time. But when the Atlantis went down, that temple was destroyed, and the machines there were partially destroyed. So they're still firing in an erratic fashion. This is why if a ships or planes happen to be in the area and it would just shoot upward through the water, it causes them to be zapped into another portal into a different time. Now, does that make sense to you? Yeah. To me, I think it, it's the explanation of it. But they said every time through history, when the civilization would get to that point, we'd have to destroy it. And then we had to start all over again. They would leave a few survivors to begin again erase all the knowledge that they had. Now, some of them were not erased that went to Egypt, and they're the ones that built the, the pyramids. But they had to start all over again from scratch. They said it was almost like they blew a fuse, and they couldn't allow the humans to continue that way. Let's just shut it down and start all over. But every time, look at the amount of time that had to be building up the civilization again and again and again. We are now approaching that point where we're at the same level. Psychic abilities are being brought back. Everything is happening. The mind is growing. Psychic abilities are coming back. You know, when the, you know, that X is formed and, you know, we'll need to go back down that rabbit hole, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Look, how many people, how many of y'all are going to be out there in the grass with your feet in the ground taking on these frequencies? Let me know in the comments down below if you hit. We're learning more. We are reaching the point where we could be at the height that these other civilizations were. They don't want to have to destroy it and start all over again. But if we were foolish enough to get to that point, they would have to do it. Fire in the distance, you know, 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 you know
You didn't win. It's all right, it's all right. It's all right. So we gotta change the thing. We gotta put some trees. We're moving people up the hill. The same people that's uh you know trying to play God you know like that's crazy like he he said that on camera if you want to see what he said you go back and you or, you or you just read it bro it's right there that's what the man said do you remember when five unblemished red heifers arrived in Israel on September 15th, 2022? Those red heifers came all the way from a privately owned ranch along the Brazos River in a town called Glen Rose, Texas. Glen Rose, Texas just so happens to be in the path of totality on April 8th, 2024. Welcome to part four of things you probably haven't heard about the 2024 total solar eclipse. The 2017 eclipse went through seven cities named Salem and the 2024 eclipse is going to go through seven cities named Nineveh. And both of these eclipses are seven years apart. It's time to talk about the number seven. But first, we have a quick Hebrew lesson. Elohim is a plural noun meaning gods or deities in Hebrew. The plurality is important because it validates everything Yeshua said that was recorded in the New Testament. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, Yeshua says, I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come the Almighty. In Genesis chapters 1 and 2, we see Elohim created the heavens, the earth, and everything in them in six days. In Genesis 2 verse 3, Elohim blessed the seventh day, making it holy. We're literally one chapter and a couple verses into the Bible and Elohim is blessing the seventh day, making it holy, showing us how significant the number seven is. We continue to see the number seven throughout the word of God. Here are just a few examples in no particular order. Jacob served Laban for seven years. Pharaoh's repetitive dream featured seven fat oxen representing seven years of plenty and seven lean oxen representing seven years of famine. There were seven branches of the golden lampstand. There were seven trumpets and seven priests who sounded them at the siege of Jericho. The people marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days. Noah entered the ark with seven family members. God shut the door. Then seven days later, the floodwaters covered the earth. Once in the land, the children of Israel were commanded to observe the Shemitah, known as the year of release. It was a sabbatical year in which all of the land rested for the entire year. Debts were forgiven, land was returned to its owner, and captives were set free. The Feast of Unleavened Bread lasts seven days. The Festival of Booths, known as Sukkot, is also seven days long. The Sabbath is on the seventh day of the week. The tribulation will last seven years. There are seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls, all mentioned in the book of Revelation. The ordination ceremony performed by Moses in the book of Leviticus chapter 8 required oil to be sprinkled seven times on the altar. To complete the ordination ceremony, the priests had to stay at the entrance of the tabernacle for seven days and seven nights. According to the Torah given to the children of Israel at Mount Sinai, anyone who touches a dead body, a human bone, or a grave is ceremonially unclean, unclean for seven days. During the time of King Hezekiah, the festival of unleavened bread was celebrated for seven days. Then the assembly decided to continue celebrating and rejoicing for another seven days. The dedication of Solomon's temple was celebrated for seven days. And just after that dedication, the assembly celebrated the feast of Sukkot together for another seven days. Ezekiel's temple, which many believe will be the third temple, will be cleansed and atoned for for seven days. Now let's get back to the red heifers in Israel. One of them is going to be sacrificed soon, quite possibly this year. One of the motives of the October 7th attack is attributed to the red heifers that were taken from Texas 
to Israel. Just take a look at this article in CBS News. The spokesperson for Hamas, Abu Ubaida, began a speech marking the 100th day of the war in Gaza, accusing the Jews of bringing red cows to the Holy Land, citing it as one of the motives of the attack. After one of these unblemished red heifers all the way from Texas is sacrificed in Israel, a priest is going to take its blood and sprinkle it not one, not two, but seven times toward the front of the temple or tabernacle. Where will this temple be built and which priest is doing the sprinkling? My answers might surprise you. Come back for part five. Until next time, bye. Hey, we building, we gonna eat tonight, baby. Scientists have reported that a horned comet three times bigger than Mount Everest exploded and is hurtling toward Earth. The celestial hailstone, which orbits around the sun every 71 years, won't reach its closest point to Earth until 2024, whereupon it will become visible to the naked eye. This comet will then be catapulted back into the solar system and won't make its cosmic comeback tour until the year 2095. And you think, you know, it's crazy. They want to label everything, well, a devil comet, but you know, they try to demonize anything, you know, that's associated with this shit, like, like 666. They tried to make that like the mark of the beast, but the mark of the beast would find out what? Six protons, neutrons, electrons, us, right? crazy you know the devil comment you know maybe it's the god comment nigga like <laughs> you feel me but look we're gonna keep going though like this this is crazy but they've always known about these things let's keep building i ain't gonna talk too much i'm just gonna show y'all Everything is aligned. Keep watching. About this. The sun and the moon are not aligned on April. Hell, I'm proud of you. It took you a minute, but you caught up. That's good. Which timeline did you come from? I'm curious. They haven't been lined up and they haven't been where they're supposed to be for a long time. I've been, I've been saying, saying that this too. for a long time now. Not since that 2017 eclipse has stuff been in the right spot. My guess, however, is that what we're seeing is uh, going to be real fucking interesting. So be ready for that. You're going to see some shit you didn't expect. Have you ever wondered about the cosmic dance between celestial bodies? Let's demystify the three-body problem in simple terms. It's the science of predicting how three objects in space, influenced only by their gravity, move and interact. Unlike two objects, which we can predict easily, adding a third makes everything chaotic and unpredictable. This problem has puzzled astronomers since ancient times, and even today, it challenges our best mathematicians and computers. But why does it matter? Understanding this chaos helps us unlock the secrets of the universe, from the orbits of planets to the dance of galaxies. So next time you look up at the night sky, remember the complex beauty of the three-body problem. What is the most dangerous information that you know? Oh boy. Well, I'll tell you what I told the director of the Defense Intelligence Agency in his office. Well, the first question he asked me was, we don't understand why you haven't committed suicide yet to me. And I said, well, because I don't need to do that. Because his father had, you know, what I'm about to tell you. And that is that there's a group of people who control this issue that are trying to uh, sort of urgent provocateur to provoke an interplanetary incident. So we'll, the next war, World War III, will be interplanetary. And there, if there is a serious group of nut jobs, and they have to be put on a leash and stood down fast and quickly. And the trigger, when unacknowledged, hit hundreds of millions of people seeing it. 
this group started releasing stuff to the CNN and Washington Post and New York Times, it's the kind of brainwashing that's already started to try to convince the public there is, is an alien threat. You know? Did you all see this commercial? This is a, by Squarespace and it's hinting at a possible UFO invasion. Once again, through another commercial, we continue to point towards this possible alien invasion. So what are they really trying to tell you through all of this? Because in this commercial, you see everybody is on their uh, phones and stuff. And you will see these uh, UFOs fly over. And then you see the aliens acting upset. So then they hack all of the technology saying hello down there because they want everybody to look up at them. Some very, very creepy stuff indeed. So what exactly are they trying to tell you in this commercial? They want everybody to look up. And they're hacking all of the technology in the process to have everybody look up at them. Some very strange stuff. Constantly throughout these uh, recent ads regarding uh, aliens. Comment down below. Like the video. Share the video. You all tell me what you think about all of this. This is weird. Charles Bolden has been one of NASA's main employees since 2009, when he officially assumed the role of administrator. Since then, he has participated in four different space flights, which resulted in more than 680 hours spent in space. However, he was recently forced to take medical leave, after telling a large audience in Houston that, in the next five years or so, we will be experiencing an alien invasion. That's right, one of the NASA officials declared that, of the 30,000 civilizations out there, we will be attacked by one in the next five years or so. Before he could finish his speech, he was forced off the stage by two big employees who had a very worried expression on their faces. NASA ended up blaming his depression for this behavior, effectively sweeping everything under the rug. What? The National Guard will be deployed for total solar eclipse on April 8th. Why? Why does the National Guard need to be deployed for a solar eclipse? What's so concerning? I mean, all right, you had me a little bit the uh, keeping the kids away from school. I was like, why would you do that? It's only a solar eclipse, but whatever, okay, and, and, and now? The National Guard needs to be deployed. And you know, on top of that, what's the deal with stocking up on food and making sure your batteries are all charged? Like, what do they think is gonna happen during this solar eclipse? I mean, I thought it was just the moon goes in front of the sun, it gets a little dark and everything is fine. I, I don't understand why we need the National Guard, why we need to shut down schools, why we need to stock on supplies and why do we need our batteries fully charged for an eclipse? What the hell's going on? Another planet and the entire thing goes into chaos mode and doesn't work and can never predict what's gonna happen next. But if you go out tonight with all the billions of stars in our galaxy and all the planets and, and moons and everything, check them out where they are at a certain time tonight, next year, same night, same time, even though we're billions of miles away, corkscrewing through space, nothing changes. Every single star will be in the exact same position. The chances of a moon and a sun 400 times bigger, 400 times farther, eclipsing each other perfectly is one in infinity, okay? And, okay, <laughs> and they happen all the time. And after that, did you know that eclipses, the cycle of eclipses repeat every 18 years? Every 18 years, they do the same thing again and again and again. That's impossible in a beehive gravitational bullshit model. Uh, I, there have been some humans. It, it's a very, very sensitive subject. Uh, I'm going to steer away from that. But uh, I will tell you that uh, since the beginning of this year, there have been uh, over 200 animal mutilations on Long Island. It's uh, supposedly a big secret. I know that there's four major law enforcement investigations. Uh, investigators uh, 
working in plain clothes. On Long Island, on Long New York. Island, yeah, Long Island, New York. We have a, an investigator uh, working with us who's sending us videotape uh, uh, and keeping us informed of what's going on. So it, it still is a problem. And you say it's food, that's what they're doing. <clears throat> well, food or genetic experiments, uh, take your choice. Now, uh, it hasn't gone maybe to the point of where they're mutilating humans, but you do believe there are abductions. And, uh, and you also believe that at one point there may have been some kind of a clash between American military forces and uh, these UFOs? That's one of the stories uh, when we began to discover what I call the Grand Deception uh, was in 1979, and apparently there was some kind of clash. Uh, 1983 is the date that I call that we finally recognized that we had made a disastrous mistake. And uh, that's when MJ-12 realized that they were in deep, deep trouble. They had made uh, a deal with these people, and it had not uh, worked out, and now the question was what to do. you got about a minute left. Um, what would you like to say to people out there to prepare them for it? Now, you've made allusions a couple of times when I've had you on the program that uh, something is coming. We've heard that before, something is coming. Why do you think something is coming, what's coming, and how should we get ready for it? There's really no way to get ready for it. The reason I think it's coming is because I have contacts within the government that uh, tell me that they're bracing themselves for something, but they're not going to tell us about it. George, maybe the cover-up was in our best interest, maybe not. Maybe the government underestimated the intelligence of the American people and decided we just couldn't handle it. But let me tell you this, the truth is still the truth, and nothing can change that. Not the military, not the government, and not me. John Lear, thank you very much. y'all look we, we we all need to take a deep breath right now i'm about to lay it on y'all real thick Ugh, look at this damn peanut butter okay y'all brace yourself this shit about to get crazy y'all seen that movie that came out on netflix the uh the three body uh problem right watch it on netflix if you haven't already man like it's talking about the same shit that all the presidents was talking about the invasion and stuff but look i want to know do y'all think that it's going to be a blue beam situation or do you think this shit is going to be really real? I mean, nobody knows 100% the truth. None of us anyway. But, you know, if the math is mapping on certain things, then, you know, let me know in the comments down below. But look, look, we about to get, we about to, it's about to get thick. I'm about to break down some shit for y'all. So be prepared. Look at the countdown again. See, this came from the three-body problem. Uh, they were projecting this in the scientists' minds that was able to, you know, think on a certain level to destroy their technology, basically. You know, so they had this in their mind, and once this shit went to zero, they were unaliving themselves, y'all. So, look, that's... We 
you say what we want you to say. We are everywhere. Anywhere. Always watching. And we will teach you how to fear again. see the countdown did you hey look for years they were talking about the agreements that the united states or the governments had with certain extraterrestrial races and it didn't go well we've covered that many times before and now they drop this shit right here this bro this pretty much looks like a goddamn documentary when you watch it yo y'all gotta see it man you gotta see it check it out for yourself but we're gonna get even deeper into it yo it's crazy three body problem is is wow it's nuts Go I'm sorry, but yeah, I got this on here because of copyrights. I got y'all though. Like, this is as much as we can see without, you know, this shit being blocked. This show. You gotta go watch this show. This is the three body problem on Netflix. Wake up, people. They talking about it right in front of y'all. They referencing CERN. Another intelligent species from other planet. This show is just heat. It's hey, but they say Rashad and Jamal are crazy. Remember when he said that this is not even like the sky isn't even real? Scary kind of. The They're showing time. it right here. They they make us see which what, what they want us to see. CERN that they're showing right here, yo. CERN. And we will destroy the science that could defeat us. Those are the particles and stuff that... The answers to your questions will become chaotic and meaningless. The universe will remain a mystery to you forever. That's why we got so many questions but not many answers. Place of truth. We give you miracles. 
pre-wrap your world of illusions. We make you see what we want you to see. We are everywhere, anywhere, always watching, learning all your secrets, uncovering your lies, and we will teach you how to feel again. And you see the headphones that they got? What 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 is that in reference of? That's the Google glasses that just dropped, yo. It it come on man, like pick up on it. It's crazy. Are bugs. Hey, remember what the what the what uh, the KGB agent said that Anunnaki said to uh to Putin? He said you're like chickens to us, you're like livestock. These niggas said they're bugs. Same shit. They're gonna step on us. That's what they saying. It's an eye. It's an eye in the sky. That big ass eyeball again. Look, and you know what's even more crazy about this situation is they said in this doc in this well, I was about to say in this documentary, really, I mean, it seemed like it. They said that the reason why they are a dying species and they said that it took them so long to evolve, right? It took them so long to evolve and get to where they are. They're, yes, they are technically more superior than us at this time, but they said that they are 400 years away. They can't travel that fast. That's why they sent those little, those, that, that little technology to us because it can travel faster, right? And they can suppress us. So what, what they're doing is basically they're suppressing us so that when they get here, they still be more advanced than us because they gave a demonstration of how long did it take you guys to become technology technologically advanced like the way that you are. 
and we evolve at a faster rate and we become smarter and smarter at a faster rate. So therefore, by the time they get here, we're going to be way past y'all at that point. And we just going to flick y'all with, a, you know, just destroy y'all easily. So what they said is basically they're going to suppress our technology. They're going to kill our science. They're going to. That's why the shit don't be making sense. That's why we arguing with each other about dumb shit. But look, let's keep rocking, though. Uh, let me know if y'all still with me. Is it? It's, it's the math mapping on this joint, yo. Let's keep building. New 2024 movie. Let's watch it together. And, and I hope that the shit ain't going to be like this, though. You know what I'm saying? Because they did say that they didn't look like us. So what y'all was seeing, that's not the way that they look. They said they did that to make us feel more comfortable. But hopefully they don't come on no shit like this. If, if they do, your ass going to get cooked. Oh, watch this. I'm speechless. Watch this. Oh, this is the best movie of 2024. I promise you. Watch this. No way. Okay. Watch, watch. Did you see that? Wow. <coughs> Don't see Shut nothing. your ass up. No way. It's finally out! Wow. Wow, this is the best movie ever. Go watch. Please not like that, though. Please let us just have an upgrade, buddy. Because <laughs> it's over. I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna hold you. Y'all, take a look at this, y'all. This is in Mexico. Look at this, y'all. Look at the look at the sky, y'all. Have you ever seen this before? Now I remember showing a video like this, and this was in uh, Florida, on the west coast of Florida. But look at this in Mexico, y'all. Doesn't that look? It look. It looks like the looks like the ferment is falling down. It looks like the ferment is breaking. Hmm? It looks like the ferment is breaking. Look at all that, like spider webs, huh? Like honeycombs. What is going on here, y'all? Look at what the, it looks like another world, right? Like an alien world. What do you? I just find this so fascinating. So, what if that is the bottom of a mothership, y'all? Some of y'all would think that that's something extraterrestrial or something like that, but it's not. This is unbelievable. That's not nothing extra. It's a doomsday fish. I just want to clear that up with y'all. It's a doomsday fish. They only come up when, you know, when they start to come up. We, we've been seeing them happen for the past few months now. They only come up when something is wrong, y'all. So, just saying. There was a man in the Dominican Republic in the woods praying. And all of a sudden, a whole group of angels appeared, and these people that were walking by, in in the in the in the village, they saw him and they seen the angels and they're recording this. Look at this, amazing. Look how many of them there are there. It's crazy. Look. Now they're saying that they're angels. They could be angels, they could be light beings, but look how many of them. There's so many of them. Unbelievable. God is great, man. God is great. And this is in broad daylight. 
Wow, look at them stand up, look how tall they are. Look how tall they are. They're like at least eight, nine feet tall. Some of them. Some of them are short. Some of them are tall. Look, you see these, these over here are tall ones. And then these are shorter ones here. Oh my God. My father. This is insane. Wow. Stay awake, people. When they launch this fake alien invasion, everybody gonna swear it's real. You know why? Because people don't know that the sky is CGI technology. I've been telling y'all this. It's not the, that's not your real sky. See the sky behind me? That same, that same sky up there, that motherfucker is not real, all right? It's not real. I've been telling y'all that for a reason because it's being controlled. It's five layers to it. It's CGI technology. They showed you this shit in that movie Kong when he threw the motherfucking spear at the motherfucking sun, nigga. Right? They showed it right to you. But before they showed it to you in Kong, for those of you who've been listening to me in this university, y'all know from day one I've been telling y'all this. So if people don't know if that's CGI technology... All right, once they, once they get the change in the frequency of the sky and they get the altering the layers of the sky to make it look like it's a war going on right there, that's not, all right? They make it seem like it's these huge spaceships that's in the sky, that's not. And then they're going to actually use actual spaceships that they do have from from other um, extraterrestrial species like these insectoids and these, and these grays and these other ones that they got, you know, they got their cahoots with. All right, they're going to make this shit look real, y'all. Listen, this is gonna be the biggest movie. Listen, this is gonna be the biggest movie they never put out, nigga. This is gonna be a, the biggest movie they ever put out. I'm saying movie for a reason because the shit ain't gonna ain't real, but it's gonna look real. Listen, you you ain't better tell people that we ain't under UFO invasion. I'm telling y'all in advance. Listen, man, holographic imagery is real, man. You gonna see motherfucking aliens running down the street, all that. Be prepared for it. I told you here first. Guys, check it out. So, some sort of. When they started seeing all these crazy things in the sky. I had to cut out the first half of this video because it was way too long, but you guys, this is crazy. What is actually going on? I keep zooming in and out because I'm just in total shock and disbelief. And then I'm looking at this tree and I'm like, okay, so the tree doesn't have it. It's like real things don't have it. Three days of darkness, let me tell you everything that I know, and Lord knows I do not want to make this video. I don't like to speculate, and I'm not given to internet conspiracy theories, but I have something that I have to tell you. I do see something here. I've been seeing it here for a long time. It's time to come clean. I moved my family out of Alaska because of a gut feeling. It wasn't the only reason. It was just the first one that caused me to look for all the rest. Maybe it's silly. Maybe none of this is true. But it bothered me so bad that I moved my family out of Alaska. This article was ran by Forbes over six years ago and can only help you speculate. This is the Edgar Cayce map, a clairvoyant communing with demons to see the future. Potentially total garbage. Only I don't think it is. Because this makes some kind of sense to me that I cannot explain. Now until very recently, and I mean this month, I did not know that there was a correlation between total solar eclipses and devastating earthquakes. And now that I do, <sighs> the plot is getting real thick, fam. Just think about natural calamities in, in, a to in, in, in the whole grand scheme of things. So not just one thing.
it's a lot of things. It's a lot of bullshit that comes with this, y'all. In September, around, about to fuck around, and find out. Of 1811, a total solar eclipse took this path through the United States. And in December of 1811, the New Madrid fault line popped off in a series of devastating earthquakes that lasted all the way through into January. Now, the scientists say there is increased earthquake activity in the face of new moons, a new moon being required for a total solar eclipse. There is a scientific correlation there that seems to have everything to do with causation. But it was three months after the eclipse. What's your point? If a barge goes under a bridge and hits one of the supports and damages it, there might be 2,000 vehicles roll over the bridge before it gives out, is what I'm saying. So that the new moon of a solar eclipse is like a barge passing under a bridge and hitting one of the supports. This is the path the total solar eclipse took in July 1963. Funny thing, it passed right through Talkeetna, Alaska, where my family and I lived, long before we were born. And then in March of 1964, a devastating earthquake tore Anchorage all to pieces. Solar eclipse is not an instant trigger, it's more like a fatal wound to the fault line. Doesn't mean there's going to be a terrible earthquake after every total solar eclipse, mm -hmm. but every total solar eclipse affects the fault lines they pass over because of that new moon, scientifically. Whether I explain these events spiritually or physically, they are true, both ways. It is the spiritual producing the physical. After the total solar eclipse of 1811, there was a series of devastating earthquakes followed by years of decline straight into the Great Depression. Followed by the Great Depression, did you hear? Do total solar eclipses just mean earthquakes? No, they affect more than just fault lines. They warn of much more than just earthquakes. Look, if I could make this stuff up out of my own mind, I'd be God, get it? But instead, look at us, us little bitty babies just learning about his creation, don't even know how it works. So, rut row, what the stink is that converging right over top of the New Madrid Fault? I mean, can you say X marks the spot? What is going on there? This is the path of the solar eclipse from August 21st of 2017. Well, nothing happened after that one, did it? Didn't warn of anything at all. Y'all forget about COVID and every single thing that has happened to our country since then? That wasn't enough to get your attention, get your minds right? Well, this is the path of that solar eclipse that's about to happen on April 8th. And the very spot where it crosses the path of the last one is the New Madrid fault line. Y'all don't see that right there? If you do not believe in God and only believe in science, that right there is alarming, bruh. And I mean, call the National Guard. See if they can stop it. <laughs> Time for a Bible punch in the mouth. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Y'all think that's a random coincidence? This is the scientific prediction should that fault line pop off. Should that New Madrid fault line pop off right there, this is the prognosticator's view of what the future topography of the United States of America is going to look like. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen at all, only that it would make great and terrible sense to me if it did. I am no authority on this subject as far as men are concerned. I got two years of videos you can scroll though and decide for yourself whether I have authority and where it might be from. And still, that's not to say that this is true or false, mm -hmm. only that it makes sense to me. But who am I? The scientists have no authority whatsoever. That's all I be saying too. Like some people be hella in their feelings. Yeah, it's not gonna be that. No, just because certain people, most people can't see shit that's going on because they're so, so consumed with daily lives and you know like it is what it is like you niggas is npcs bro it is what it is npcs you ain't even got no internal voice like come on now let's be real bro you got to be for real with who you are man like stop stop acting you know we we see you you know let me know in the comments down below do you know anybody that you starting to realize is like a npc or they admit it to you that they don't have any like internal dialogue that shit is wild to me like <laughs> It's, it's wild. We're just completely different people going completely different uh, frequencies, you know, but certain people just don't get it. They think that you're telling them what's going to happen. No, bro, we're, we're, we're showing you the correlations of things that's happening and it's not just a coincidence. That's it, man. It's the same shit, same shit that scientists and stuff do. What makes them more qualified, bro? They give you bullshit explanations for stuff and then you find out fucking five years later that the same shit that they just gave to you and they said it was life changing for you is the same shit that's killing you. How many times are we going to have to go through these cycles?
whatsoever to tell us how it's actually going to happen and neither do i know exactly how it's gonna i'm sorry it got me tight now you you know what i'm saying you got fauci like i'm sorry y'all you got you got fauci out here admitting logo oh yeah i did fuck up but you knew the whole time come on man this shit crazy they just want to sound like the smartest person in the room and i'm telling y'all i'm not claiming to be the smartest person in the room i can i just have a vision i can see things simple play out in the details we are all speculating on what exactly it's going to be. It is God who is in control of what it will be. But he gave us plenty of potential to consider in the face of world history. In March of 2011, a 9.1 undersea megathrust earthquake occurred in the Pacific Ocean, 72 miles off the coast of Japan. In July of 2010, there was a total solar eclipse that passed over the Pacific. Why would this affect Japan at all? Oh snap, this is the ring of fire and that total solar eclipse went exactly this way. And that mega thrust earthquake hit Japan this way. Oh, there's a pattern, a recurring series of events here. A pattern I did not know when I got the gut feeling to move my family out of Alaska. Not that that counts for anything. Except with me, I trust my gut. Did you know if they knew all the variables, they could predict all of the earthquakes too? It's on a schedule. What's funny is when I made that first sign of Jonah video, I wasn't thinking about any of this at all. Not considering this as a potential for anything, I was thinking World War III is on our doorstep, you know, and it is. The economy goes down, maybe a new round of disease, which thing is pestilence. Oh, snap, if pestilence followed the 2017 eclipse, is there some way to know where we are on the timeline of what it mean, what eclipses mean, or, you know, what's following them specifically, each one? Probably, I haven't looked at that yet, but I'm pretty sure, you know, you'd find it. Cause wouldn't that make sense? Three days of darkness as we're all hearing about it is based on a false private prophecy wherein in three days of darkness, the Catholic Church's enemies will all be destroyed. And that might sound good on the surface, but they got that whole idea from the Bible to begin with. And men have been making false prophecies out of stuff they got in the Bible this whole time. Internet conspiracies also need not apply because they're so chock full of disinformation, it's hard to sort it out, you know? Three Days of Darkness was one of the plagues that descended on Egypt during the Exodus. Precluding the Exodus. Does that mean we're about to get an Exodus? I stinking hope so, I really do. Does it mean we're gonna get a revival? Well, man, that's what I would surely love. Does well, you gotta think, I don't know about that because when, you know, that includes giving the land back to the rightful owners and all that other shit. And we know who the land goes back to. Are y'all, no, let me know in the comments down below. You ready for that shit? After it all hits the fan, you do not have kids. And if you do have kids, you do not have daughters. You have sons and you're not a mom, you're a dad. Protecting women and kids in a world without rule of law. You might want to share this one. Let's talk about it. Basically, following an SHTF event, just don't tell people that you have kids. They no longer exist. And if you're traveling, everyone should be dressed in such a way that they look like they could be of the male variety from a distance. Low profile and unmemorable is what we're looking for here. Now this is basically the gray man concept for the entire family. The ability to hide what's most valuable in plain sight. And one easy thing you can do, and it's probably a good idea anyways, is to shave everyone's head and face. It'll help the entire family to blend together. You have to remember that in an SHTF scenario, it's not a fashion show. It's survival of the fittest. Always remember to protect what's most precious to you. AP out. This is the thing that they're saying. They're telling you that the sun will be in Aries and there'll be eclipse in Aries. That's not true. Sun ain't going into no Aries. It's going back into Aquarius. New age, baby. That's what you don't know. <laughs> and, and free flat earth, that means the, 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 the earth's gonna stop too. That's what people don't realize. The earth will stop. And if you don't get this fruits and flowers offering done, I, hey man, I'm going to get mine done. <laughs> I done did mine on the Serpent Mound two days ago. Now, and, and we and we did the whole joint. We wrapped it around the planet. We wrapped it around the planet. We wrapped that joint around the planet. Shout out to the Atlantean people around the planet. Because we are all over the place. We ain't just in that line. It's a lot. Most of us, this is our nucleus. 
of where our people are in that line. But some of the people from around the world, are, you you showed your Atlantean spirit, and you showed what you like, what you here to do. We're dead serious. This ain't no game. This ain't game. No, no game to none of us. You think that you're gonna you're gonna uh, uh, fight a dark energy with a dark energy? <clears throat> cool, man. You go ahead and do that, man. I know what I'm doing right now. We're waking up the planet, and it is working. See, our age is coming in. Put an earth in the chat if the age is coming in. Put an earth in the chat if the if the earth stood still for like a week last year. Huh? Put an earth in the chat if it did that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just... Maybe we've been doing this for almost two years now. And now maybe we starting to see really what it really is. We put that thing through a screeching halt. Stop the presses. We don't wait for no eclipses that they put on their TV and they try to put into this algorithm, try to throw off our, what we're doing. We know what we're Look y'all, look, 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 look. That's one of those ones right there. It give you a lot to think about. It give you a lot to think about. It gives you some things to look up and research. It gives you something to watch. It's, I put a lot of references, everything in here, man. Um, it's the math math for y'all on this type of shit. You know, it's just very interesting to me. I'm not trying to tell you what to believe and what to think or anything, but look, that's just what I see is happening out here in the world, right in front of our faces. They keep playing with our tops. <laughs> like, 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 like we don't know shit. They keep playing like, like playing in your face like you're a fucking dummy. But a lot of y'all think everything is just entertainment. They've already said, and these are coming from these words came from presidents and everything else. That yes, a lot of the information they 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 get that shit and they put it into the movies, they put it into TV shows, they put it into the cartoons. They've been doing it since we were kids. The shirt I'm wearing right now with Dragon Ball Z, they've been telling us a lot of stuff the whole time about that, and why they call you know some of the most powerful beings in the whole fucking galaxy monkeys. You know, it, it, it's crazy. And then who were they slaves to? Come on now, little ass Frieza. Like, think about that shit. You know, like it's a lot of different things that, that, that you know, people aren't hip to. It sounds crazy to them, but you know, at certain points, people just have that aha moment. Like, yo, this motherfucker, like, let me go ahead and check this out. You know what I'm saying? And I do appreciate y'all for coming, rocking with me for open minds. I'm not telling you what to believe, but I'm just putting this out here on the platter for you. Hopefully, you know, the the, the, the the fucking eclipse happened and we get some upgrades before some goddamn shit start falling from the sky. Y'all feel me? So I don't know about y'all, but I know about me and what I'm going to be doing. You know, I have my own personal beliefs. And look, I'm not a bandwagon type of guy. I'm the type of guy that, look, when I first moved to North Carolina, bro, everybody else was such a North Carolina fan. So guess what? I'm the person that just gone. And, you know, I'm a Duke fan. Don't know nothing about Duke. But all of a sudden, I'm a Duke fan because everybody else is a North Carolina fan. I've never been a bandwagon. I've always done everything that I want to do. I'm the only one out of my friends that, that does YouTube, bro, that started YouTube on his own fruition. That's because I'm just, bro, I've always been me. Be happy being you and believe in what you want to believe. And just because we, dis, we, we disagree with each other don't mean that we can't cohabitate and be cool, bro. We can be bestest friends you meet in real life. You feel me? We don't always have to agree. And I, I, I've seen some people in the comments about stuff. They just be in their feelings and stuff. But in real life, bro, you got to understand, like, like I'm everything that's advertised, like, and more. You feel me? So you get the wrong idea and you get in your emotions and you get out of line. I got something for that ass, too. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just, I just got to let you know. And I do, it with a, I do it with a smile on my face, too. You know? <laughs> you feel me? I got hands, bro. <laughs> and that's real talk i'm not talking about meek mill snoop dogg and them hitting the pads and stuff and they be looking all funny and weird and shit no i'm talking about all the smoke all the smoke you know what i'm saying like <laughs> i'm with it you feel me but look at the same time you know i'm able to vibrate on any level that somebody's able to present me with if you present me with certain energy bro i'm a master of energy i'm a master of energy and frequencies man and i can meet you on any level that you know you on but at the end of the day look man hopefully y'all got something from this video very entertaining but look like i said hopefully no shit fall from the sky and we sitting here butt naked with just guns and shit and they run around ripping people apart with their hands i ain't got time for that but look do y'all understand what i'm saying about the three-body problem 
They were trying to figure out ways to destroy us before they actually got here. Because like I said, before they actually got here and, and, and those sacrifices, are they sacrificing stuff for these people to come through the gateways, the portals and stuff? Is this their antichrist? Y'all let me know about this shit in the comments down below. The Simpsons was on it again. And how can we just keep thinking that these shits are such a coincidence? The cartoon Ben came out. Then all of a sudden they got the heifers that they got from Texas and they flew to Israel. Come on, now. stop playing with me. Stop playing with me, man. How? This is unbelievable, man. But look, hopefully y'all love this video right here. Share it with your friends and family. Like, you know, I'm not telling you what to believe, but, but nigga, <laughs> you come on now. But look, I'll see you on the next video. Like I always say, spread love because there's too much hate in this world. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next video. And I'm out though. Bye.